hello friends welcome to my channel go digit today in this video i would like to share two mini tips with you so let's begin with the first mini tip uh if i open the business central here you can see that uh, sometimes uh, if we require the tenant id of our business central then there are two ways through which we can get the tenant id so the first is that we can check the url and in through that url we can have the view of our tenant id okay otherwise what we can do is that we can go to the help and support and from here we can see that this is our tenant id right but sometimes if you are writing the code and in your extension which you are developing in there also you require the tenant id okay so although there are multiple ways uh, to get that tenant id but i am telling you one of the simplest way through which you just have to call one code unit function and through that it will give you the tenant id okay so that code unit name is we create a variable and the code unit is azure ad tenant right so let's say let's see the two functions which are there in this uh, uh, code unit so to do that let me write down on open page begin end and if we see that ad tenant dot it has two functions the first function is get aad tenant domain name and the second one is get aad tenant id so tenant id will give you the id of the tenant which i showed you which is a unique id per customer and this is also that it will give you the domain name of your uh, particular tenant okay so both these functions return the text value and let me show you what value it fetches from your business central version so for that thing let me create two variables tenant id it's of text type and domain name it should be also of text type so what we can do now that i can pass tenant id is equals to ad tenant dot get ad tenant id and then domain name is equals to ad tenant dot get ad tenant domain name right and now if i pass message as percent 1 comma percent 2 with tenant id and domain name right so let's see the output by just publishing this taking time yes okay deployment is started meanwhile i can close this on business central okay. 
okay although although the deployment is successful but let's wait till the time it opens up okay uh let me try in different browser it's still loading okay it's loaded let's see whether my extension is successfully deployed or not so yes now if i go to the customers and you can see here that this is the first value is my tenant id which i showed you from here and the second one is the tenant domain name right crmbc 724439.onmicrosoft.com right so this is my domain name for this business central version although it's a sandbox environment okay which i created using cdx if you have not seen that video it is already available in my channel you can watch it up that how to create bc saas sandbox for free from the microsoft for one year of course and that's why this has this domain name started with dot on microsoft.com and this is my tenant so this is the first mini tip which i would like to share with you and uh, i hope now in case of any particular reason where you require the to get the, to fetch the tenant id or the domain name in your extension development you can do so by using this as your ready tenant code unit this code unit is a part of the system application it's not the part of the base application right now the second thing the second mini tip which i would like to share with you is is in the settings.json so uh, if you are developing an application an extension for your app source for the microsoft app source through which any of the customer uh, from any part of the world can download can buy your application can install that application can use that application right so generally to whenever we want to deploy uh, whenever we want to build any application for the app source there are certain rule sets we always set it up okay in our uh, like we can create a a uh, rule set dot json file in our project specifically through which uh, it will follow all those rules the compiler will follow all those rules and gives us the particular error or particular warning whenever it get that uh, particular uh, code okay so if you don't want to do that and you just want a common place a global place where you can uh, set out the path of your rule set file okay where you want that these are the standard rule sets which i want my ex any extension which i am building it should follow all those rules so what we can do is that in the settings or json first of all we have to set this al dot enable external rule sets to true which means that allow the use of the url as the location of the project rule sets or included rule sets okay so the thing is now once you define it as a true then the second parameter which we have to use is is al dot rule set path okay and in this i can provide the url where exactly my uh, my rule set dot json file is placed so for example you can read the definition also that it sets the path to the file containing the customized rules to use when running the code analysis the path can be a file system path or a fully qualified remote url so which means that this property rule set path is not limited to your to your local file system okay it does not mean that now your rule set file your rules which you want to set for your extension development should be available in your local file system no whether you can store it in your local file system otherwise you can store it in the remote url as well so for example you can see this is the path of not my local file system but it's it's a remote url and if i show you and you can see that 
this is the URL and in this particular URL it has the default rule set file okay which has currently three rules defined so it is you can see here the description is default app source rule set and one warning is is with with the code is double zero two nine which is that removing a page extension is allowed for the partners because AL does not support obsoleting them second one is specifying the obsolete reasons a good practice so it's not like that normal thing but uh, the idea behind is that you can create your uh, different different rule set uh, based on the different warnings or errors and place it at any particular server or at any place remote location and you just have to pass that URL and this property enable external rule set will make sure that system your project while running the code analysis check all those rules which are stored in this particular file uh, which is stored at particular remote URL right so this is a uh, very interesting thing that now you are not bound to create uh, separate separate rule sets or com uh, for every project which you are building you can create a common file store it somewhere and use it in your set global settings or json which will be applicable for all the extensions right so i think these are the two minute tips which i would like to share with you in the today's video uh, if you like it please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel next week uh, we will learn some new topic again in the business central technical world or the functional world so based on that particular thing which i will prepare by the that time thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next week